Antonio starts right now. While the worst may be over here, we're still seeing some gusty winds in Orange, Texas, and we'll likely be looking at a lot of damage. We have a live report coming up. Hurricane Laura slamming the Gulf Coast, leaving thousands without power in Port Arthur, Texas and Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'm Melvin Lopez in Baton Rouge. We'll have more coming up. And outside with live cam, we'll see if any of this could affect our weather here in South Central Texas with Mike Ostrich coming up. It's a very busy weather morning, as you can tell. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, August 27th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, very busy, especially as you saw our Justin Horn out there covering and has been following it all overnight. That's right. Reports from him throughout the morning. But let's go straight to Mike Ostrich for the very latest. Mike. Well, just look at the, uh, the map behind me and this thing. It made land last night as a very, very strong Category 4 storm with Wind, sustained winds about 150 miles per hour. 157 is the threshold to category five. And look at it. I mean, it is still, it looks like a classic hurricane out there, even though it is over land and it continues to work its way up to the north. I guess the one of the good things is it's moving pretty quickly. It's not just sitting in one spot, but boy, it is definitely packing a punch. Still, uh, now it has been downgraded and it will continue to weaken as it's over land, but it's still winds are 120 miles per hour gusting to 150 miles per hour and it's moving up to the north at 15 miles per hour so that's going to take it up into arkansas even into arkansas as a category one storm throughout the rest of the morning then it's going to make a bit of a right hand turn in through the mid-south uh out through the uh, ohio valley and be a big rain producer up there as far as what we get from this storm maybe a couple of crumbs as far as a few showers around the area and then also indirectly it's going to really help to heat us up. Now the humidity has come back into the picture as you noticed yesterday afternoon we didn't get any sort of a drop in the humidity and it's very humid this morning. We're at 80 degrees right now 79 New Braunfels low 70s in the hill country temperatures are up. What about uh, four or five, six degrees compared to the past couple of days and a moderate amount of mold pigweed is on the low side throughout the rest of the morning. Temperatures will stay uh, about where they are, maybe fluctuated a couple of degrees here and there, partly cloudy skies later on today. Had to do it going for 100. We hit 98 yesterday with those few extra clouds around here. We'll have some clouds, maybe a shower. It is going to be hot. It is going to be humid and it's going to stay this way for a while. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on, sir? No, not much right now, Mike. Just a little bit of construction and some moderate to heavy traffic here. These are the northbound lanes of 151 from 410. Uh, there was an accident there earlier. That traffic that's still showing the effects of the traffic here on 410 and 151. Construction, Tenant Dominion. We have that. We also have construction at 1604 in Old Hausman and 37 in I 10. We have a little bit of construction. Hopefully that's clear. This gets cleared up by 6 a.m. Mark Stephanie. Thank you very much, Nick. Well, as Mike mentioned, Laura has weakened to a category three hurricane, but is still causing flash flooding and catastrophic storm surges in southwestern Louisiana and parts of southeast Texas. Our meteorologist Justin Horn is live in orange right on the Texas Louisiana border. Good morning, Justin. Good morning to you guys. Winds still gusty here this morning, but certainly not as strong as what we were looking at a few hours ago. We know there's damage around here. We haven't ventured far from where we've been all night long. This is the uh, Orange City Hall that we're at, and they have a generator, so we have lights here, but we can kind of see across the street where there is some damage. We know there's a lot of trees down, and once the sun comes up, we're likely going to be looking at quite a bit of damage here in Orange. I want to show you a little bit of what we saw last night. Take a listen. It's around 1230 here in Orange, and we've really seen the winds pick up now, it's seeing some big time gusts anywhere from 60 to potentially 70 miles per hour. A lot of rain as well. The storm is about, at least the eye of the storm, is about 30 miles to our south and east. We're expecting to get the western side of the eye wall. And as we speak, we're starting to see the power flicker here. We may lose power, expecting to lose power overnight as these winds continue to pick up. It's 1 a.m. here in Orange, and the eye wall is about 15 miles to our east and southeast. We're on the west side of the eye wall right now, and winds are very strong, but not as strong as they could be. Uh, looks like this storm is actually moving due north. We'll get just brushed by the eye wall. Our friends off to the east, though, much stronger winds. Places like Lake Charles getting battered by this storm uh, this morning. 
and we're told that many people there are Lake Charles without power. You see trees come down in spots. We're keeping an eye on the power lines uh, here off in the distance. Tree interacting with the power lines. You can see the, the sparks up there. It looks like this storm is almost moving due north. So it's going to move probably right up the Sabine River. Oh. <laughs> That's not good. We're going to be uh, get out of the way of that. It is 1.30 and we're in the worst of the storm, worst of Hurricane Laura as she's pushing off to the north. The eye wall moving just to our east. We're seeing some very strong winds here, gusts up to 80, 90, potentially even 100 miles per hour where we are. Uh, we have seen some damage, trees toppled, uh, power lines going down, and we're likely going to see more of that as we go into the rest of the night. And when dawn breaks tomorrow, we'll be looking probably at a lot of damage here in Orange. It's 2 a.m. and we are within the eye wall of Hurricane Laura as it moves almost due north. The eye about 8 to 10 miles to our east. Uh, we've seen winds now, uh, very strong winds for about an hour or so. And we're likely seeing some gusts up to around 100 miles per hour where we are in orange. This is going to create some widespread damage. We've already seen a ton of trees down, power lines down, and by the time we get into tomorrow morning, we're likely going to be looking at quite a bit of damage where we are in orange. We probably got another hour or so of these very strong winds before things start to subside a little bit and Hurricane Laura continues to move off to the north. And uh, keep in mind, guys, we were on the west side of the storm, which is actually uh, it's not the calmer side of the storm, but the winds weren't as great as what they were on the east side of the storm. So places in southwestern Louisiana uh, could be looking at catastrophic damage. And once the sun comes up again, we'll have a better idea of what that damage looks like. Back to you. Thank you, Justin. You and Billy stay safe out there. We'll talk to you guys in just a bit, Justin. Thank you. And as thousands fled the path of Hurricane Laura, for many of them, the first stop is the Processing Center on Gimbler Road. Sky 12 there showing the long lines as families waited to get in. Several hotels housing hurricane evacuees as well. People have been coming by bus and others coming in their own vehicles. Of course, all of that right here in San Antonio. Lines were so long at one point, the Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says they had a gasoline truck at the ready to make sure when no, no one ran out of gas while waiting in those long lines. Lines. And moving evacuees into shelters amid the pandemic has been challenging here at home and much of that help coming from the Red Cross, which is going to need more volunteers. Our KSA community partners are teaming up with the Red Cross to get the word out. You can fill out an application online at ksetcommunity.com. Now, KSA community also preparing to host a phone bank on Friday to help with relief efforts. That phone bank will be collecting donations from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday. More storm coverage to come, but new this morning. San Antonio police say a man is recovering after being shot on the northwest side of town overnight. It happened in the 2300 block of, okay, uh, that'd probably be northeast side, 2300 block of Austin Highway around 930. Police say a man was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. They say he was not cooperating right now. Not much is known about the suspect or who shot him uh, or a motive behind the shooting. Police are still investigating. In your morning headlines, the rest of the NBA postseason may be in jeopardy after the Milwaukee Bucks refused to take the court in Orlando for game five of their playoff game against the Magic last night. The Bucks remained in their locker room in protest of the shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin Sunday. The game was postponed along with two other playoff games by the NBA, the Houston Rockets against Oklahoma City and the Lakers and Blazers. Meanwhile, NBA players are deciding what they want to do going forward. The terrorist who pleaded guilty to killing 51 Muslim worshipers in New Zealand last year will spend the rest of his life in prison without parole. That's the maximum penalty legally possible in the nation. Britain Tarrant pleaded guilty to opening fire at two mosques in Christchurch. He chose not to address the court at his sentencing. The judge said Tarrant showed no mercy and was, quote, empty of any empathy, end quote, to his victims. 91 survivors and relatives of victims gave wrenching testimony at the four-day hearing in Christ Church. President Donald Trump sets to deliver his acceptance speech at the White House as the Republican National Convention wraps up this evening. His speech expected to draw between 1,000 and 1,500 people. That's according to outgoing counselor Kellyanne Conway. 
Some health experts say the crowd could pose a health risk because of coronavirus. Earlier this week, the campaign said it was working with a coronavirus advisor for all of their event planning. 440, 80 degrees. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning here locally, pretty calm for now, 80 degrees, a little bit humid, but of course we have Justin tracking Laura all, all morning. And right now we want to take you back to a live shot. The rain continues out there in parts of southeast Texas. You're looking live at Orange. That's just east northeast of the Beaumont Port Arthur area. KSAT has you covered as we are tracking Laura. And Hurricane Laura now a Category 3 hurricane made landfall overnight as a strong Category 4 storm packing winds up to 150 miles per hour. This is a live look at Galveston right now. One of the strongest storms ever to make landfall in the United States. And the power of the storm surge on full display as Laura came ashore. ABC's Elwyn Lopez has an update now from Baton Rouge. This morning, the Gulf Coast feeling the effects of Hurricane Laura. Folks, this is not survivable. We're bracing for a challenge after we see this extremely destructive storm come through. The storm is slamming the region, bringing heavy rain and gale force winds. And if you think you're safe because you made it through Rita in southwest Louisiana, Understand this storm is going to be more powerful. Earlier in the day, Laura upgraded to a catastrophic event, rapidly intensifying as it barreled towards Texas and Louisiana. This is a dangerous, dangerous storm surge. And, and in some cases here, you look at some of these values, it's not survivable. Thousands flock into evacuation centers around the state. This Hurricane Laura is going to be catastrophic for the areas that it hits hardest. And near Houston, we're expecting lots of lots of traumas. Hospitals now preparing for the worst. Overnight, warnings from officials getting more urgent. The hurricane growing and tornado watches activated across Louisiana's coast. Despite officials evacuation orders, many insisting they're going to try to ride it out. He has boats in the backyard. If we have to leave, we have another option. Here in Baton Rouge, we're also seeing the effects of Hurricane Laura with a tropical storm wind gusts as well as heavy rain. Now officials say that we could also see flooding and are asking people in the area to stay off the roads. In Baton Rouge, Elwin Lopez, ABC News. Now 445, 80 degrees. And coming up next, the latest on the police involved shooting of Jacob Blake, including more details on the NBA protest. And welcome back. It is 447. This is a live look in Orange, Texas. That's right there on the Texas Louisiana border. Our coverage of Hurricane Laura will continue throughout the morning, and we're going to check in with Mike Osterhage to get the latest info. And the Ken, that's coming up. The NBA season appears to be on hold as players protest the shooting of Jacob Blake. ABC's Mona Qatar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, walk out. The NBA postseason is in doubt following the police-involved shooting of Jacob Blake. LeBron James reportedly walking out of the meeting after voting to stop the season. Me being African-American in America and to see um, what continues to happen with the police brutality towards my kind is very troubling. This coming after the Milwaukee Bucks announced they would not be playing. Our focus today cannot be on basketball. According to investigators, Officer Rustin Chesky is seen here in these videos following Blake to the driver's side of his car and appearing to lean in when Chesky opens fire. Authorities now saying police were responding to a call from a woman who said her boyfriend was not supposed to be on the premises. Family members say Blake was trying to de-escalate an argument between two women. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live interview with Stephen A. Smith. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. At 10 till. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Steph. Not much going on right now. A little bit of construction still, but no major accidents. A lot of green on the screen. It's looking great out there right now, but we still have some construction here. This is 37 and I 10. That looks like it just cleared up. We have here. This is going to be 1604 in Old Houseman. Hopefully that gets cleared up here soon. And uh, what else do we have? This is going to be 10 at Dominion. Still a little bit of construction there, but it looks like that is clearing up as well. All right, Mike, weather update. How's it looking?
Well, it's getting pretty humid out there as far as uh, we are concerned there, and, and that is going to be sticking around. So unfortunately, just get used to it. Nothing really going on around here except for the humidity. Look off to the east. This is a radar picture right now, and as you can see, that thing is still packing a punch and working its way up to the north, but still a very well-defined eye to that storm. It is still a Category 3 storm with winds uh, at at altitude of 120 miles per hour. I say that because uh, first of all, as you can see, this is going to continue as a hur at hurricane strength going up into Arkansas and then work its way in through the uh, mid south and the Ohio Valley and finally get on out of here. But that's going to be a huge rainmaker and we'll still have some uh, pretty good winds associated with that storm. And I say those winds at altitude because the surface a little bit lower just because you've got houses, trees, everything else to uh, kind of break up the wind a bit, but I mean, we're still looking at some 62 mile per hour sustained winds, 40s, uh, upper 30s all around the area. You can see exactly where the eye of that storm is. And this right there at orange is where uh, Justin Horn is as of right now. Potential rainfall. I mean, we're talking about uh, half a foot or better in many locations right along the path of that storm all the way up through Louisiana. And that's on top of along the coast, especially some of that storm surge that moved on in. Back here at home, this is the big story as far as the humidity. Dew point temperatures are definitely up. You know, the past, well, not so much yesterday morning, but earlier in the week we had some very pleasant conditions in the morning, but that has definitely changed. As a matter of fact, uh, dew points, 24 hour change, especially in the hill country, you're really starting to feel a lot more humidity as of right now. And like I said, just get used to it because it is definitely going to be sticking around. Now, as far as any rain, we are on the, the like Justin was alluding to, not the dry side, but the uh, less rainy side of that storm. That's on the other side, on the east uh, or the right hand side in relation to the direction of travel. We are going to see a few wraparound showers on the back side of that storm today. Pretty much about it. Maybe a couple of them tomorrow as well, but also being on the left side of the storm, that's where the air sinks a little bit more. And so actually the indirect effect from the storm is the fact that it is going to help us to heat up. And so yesterday was hot enough and today is going to be even hotter. 93 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and going for a high temperature today. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to happen up to 100 with a shower or two, but mm, you know, few and far between southeasterly winds just going to keep the humidity around here. Maybe a couple of showers tomorrow. Going pretty much for a clean sweep with triple digits in through the weekend and still upper 90s next week. And again, maybe another chance at a few showers by the middle of next week, but just hot. Very Thank you. Warm. Thank you, Mike. 452, 80 degrees. And coming up next, a look at a new study that re-emphasizes the effectiveness of honey when fighting off common cold symptoms. Well, as expected, the bulk of Hurricane Laura is now inland over Louisiana, but you are looking live right now at the upper Texas coast and Galveston, where some wind and heavy rain is continuing to fall. But the bulk of the storm again hitting parts of uh, southeast Texas and southwestern Louisiana very, very hard. Justin Horn is in orange on the border with Louisiana. We'll have an update from him coming up and stay with KSAT and KSAT.com for updates all morning long. And time now, it's 4.55. So honey can be used for a number of recipes, but now a new study shows it can cure common cold symptoms. Max Massey shows us this new study, how honey could even be more effective than over-the-counter medication. Oxford researchers find honey can be extremely effective in relieving the symptoms of cold and flu-like illnesses. Yes, even more effective than the usual commercial remedies. And honey can provide a safer, cheaper, and more readily available alternative to antibiotics. Honey has long been used as a home remedy for coughs, but its effectiveness in treating common illnesses has not been heavily researched, not until now. Physicians from Oxford University's Medical School and Nuffield Department of Primary Care Health Sciences analyzed existing evidence to determine how the symptoms of upper respiratory tract infections responded to honey. Those are sicknesses like the common cold, illnesses that affect the nose, the sinuses, and your throat. Researchers compiled the results of 14 studies, nine of which only involved children. Most compared honey with more conventional treatments like over-the-counter medicines. When they looked at studies comparing honey to a placebo, authors were unable to reach the same conclusion as they did while looking at other comparative studies. They said more research should be done there, but a large category of previous research has proven that honey has the power to kill bacteria. Studies have shown that it is effective against dozens of strains of bacteria, including E. coli and Salmonella. 
These physicians and researchers encourage doctors to consider recommending honey to patients in place of prescribing antibiotics. These antibiotics can cause side effects and lead to antibiotic resistance when they're overused. And another study of 139 children found that honey did a better job of easing nighttime coughs and a better job of improving sleep than multiple popular brand medicines like Benadryl. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 457 and 78 degrees for now. President Trump is getting ready to speak on the final night of the Republican National Convention this evening. And SpaceX going to try another historic launch tomorrow. Details just ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hurricane Laura battered the city of Orange overnight. We're still seeing some gusty winds and we're going to be looking at a lot of damage. We have a live report coming up. Plus, the Republican National Convention concluding tonight with a speech from President Donald Trump. And outside live, looking at downtown, very humid over South Texas on your early Thursday morning. And a good morning to you. It is August 27th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday and a very busy morning for Justin, but also Mike. How's it looking, Mike? Well, not as busy here, obviously, and we're going to be uh, talking to Justin in just a couple of moments. But the uh, one thing for sure, when you step outside, these numbers are definitely up from where they have been. Temperatures are in the basically mid and upper 70s, and the humidity has made a return as expected. And unfortunately, get used to that because it will definitely be sticking around. We've got a little bit of a breeze out of the north northwest, but winds are going to be shifting around out of the southeast throughout the day. And so that will just continue to kind of pump in some of the uh, humidity aquifer dropped down three tenths of a foot yesterday. Obviously, we're still well below 660 on the 10 day average and mold and pigweed are both on the moderate side. So what's it feel like when you step outside heat index right now at about two, three, four degrees to the uh, current temperatures. And uh, that's what's going to be greeting you as you head out the, uh, the front door right now. As I mentioned, mold is on the moderate side. So humidity is back hot, humid today. looks like we're going to be back to the triple digits. A couple of showers out there and then we're going to be seeing hot and humid conditions all the way through the weekend. A stray shower, yeah, even going into next week, uh, maybe upper 90s by midweek and a couple of showers by the, the middle portion of the week. All right, here's what's going on to the east of us. And as you can see, still, it is a very well-defined storm as it continues to trek pretty quickly up to the north. The latest numbers, it continues to, obviously being over the land, uh, Laura continues to kind of weaken. So still, but it's packing a punch of 110 miles per hour. It is still a Category 2 storm. It's going to be weakening down to a Category 1 and moving on off to the northeast and I'll tell you one thing uh, Louisiana and East Texas are definitely taking a very hard hit and over there right along the Texas Louisiana border uh, meteorologist Justin Horn has been there all night. I know it was really rough earlier Justin. What's it like now? Uh, it's much better, Mike. Winds have calmed significantly, so uh, the, the winds are down. We're still getting some rain here, uh, but we're going to be watching for damage here next couple of hours. Once the sun comes up, uh, we're going to be driving around carefully and seeing what we see as far as damage goes. Uh, we're likely going to see a lot of trees down. As you can imagine here in East Texas, there's a ton of trees. This is a, a big lumber town. Uh, those trees uh, falling on power lines. We saw a transformer blow uh, behind us a little bit earlier. A lot of flashes, in fact, uh, around where we were. We're we uh, hunkered down at City Hall here in Orange most of the night. I, I think we saw some gusts up around 100 miles per hour. Uh, certainly seemed that way, and I would imagine that's going to do quite a bit of damage here within the city of Orange. Now, uh, we were in the western side of the eye wall. It was much worse off to the east. Keep in mind, I-10 is closed, so you get into Louisiana, I-10 is completely closed down, basically all the way to Baton Rouge. And that's because not only are, are they seeing winds, they also got storm surge all the way up to I-10. Uh, not a good situation east of here for our friends in Louisiana. Uh, but we're, again, going to assess some of that damage coming up here in just a little bit, and we'll let you know uh, what we see here in the city of Orange. Uh, reporting live in Orange, Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. Hey everyone, hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. Right now, traffic's looking good. A lot of green on the screen there. You got a smooth ride to work if you're heading there. Right now, let's take a look at some drive times. Eastbound 151, 1604 to 90. You got a nine minute ride. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. So looking great there. All right, a little bit of construction right now in 1604 going east on Bandera to Hausman Road. This has been here since we've been on the air. Hopefully, this gets cleared up 
around 6 to 7 a.m. So it's a smooth ride because those eastbound lanes can get clogged up from time to time. Mark, Stephanie? More traffic and weather coming up, but first breaking news. Several people have been arrested after a shooting early this morning at a strip club on the city's north side near San Antonio International Airport. It happened just after three this morning. Our Katrina Weber is live with the details. Katrina. Well, good morning. Uh, there is one man who was shot here at this nightclub and police are calling him a suspect. Now, I talked to police just a few minutes ago. They say at this point he is the only one who they believe is facing any charges. They do have several people detained. Let me give you a look at what's been going on. A lot of police here at the XTC Cabaret. Uh, this is just off of Broadway near Loop 410. And this is where the shooting happened about 3.15 this morning. Police say that there was a fight inside the nightclub where bottles were broken. There were several people involved. Uh, security guards ushered everyone out of the club who was involved in that fight. And then that's when the shooting started. One of those people, police say, went back to his car, grabbed an AK-47 and began shooting at the club. Security returned fire, hitting that person who was shooting. Uh, he was hit in his upper body and his arm, taken to University Hospital. But police say it does not appear that his wounds are life-threatening. No one else here at the club was hit by any of the gunfire. But police are here with a thorough investigation going on. Uh, we did see some women come out of the club just now as they were getting being allowed to leave the club. Uh, but police, it seems, have a lot of work here to do to piece together exactly what happened. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Vice President Mike Pence closing out day three of the Republican National Convention as the GOP continues their pitch to the American people to reelect President Donald Trump. ABC's Ines de la Quatera is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, Vice President Pence taking center stage at the RNC. The choice in this election is whether America remains America. Speaking from Fort McHenry in Baltimore, the vice president addressed a crowd that, for the most part, was not wearing face masks as he tried to put a positive spin on the president's COVID-19 response, even as the U.S. reports nearly 180,000 coronavirus deaths. To bring America all the way back, we need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. But Joe doesn't seem to understand is that America is a nation of miracles. Biden camp slamming Pence, writing in a statement he used debunked scare tactics and gaslighting to try and further divide the country. Other speakers on day three included former Notre Dame coach Lou Holtz, who went so far as to question Biden's Catholic faith. The Biden-Harris ticket is the most radically pro-abortion campaign in history. They and other politicians or Catholics in name only. And Kellyanne Conway, one of the president's longest serving advisors, who was set to leave the White House at the end of the month, citing a need to focus on her family. President Trump and Vice President Pence have lifted Americans, provided them with dignity, opportunity, and results. This, as we're learning, at least one of the immigrants featured in a naturalization ceremony that aired on Tuesday night did not know the video would be used at the convention or that President Trump would even attend. The president is set to close out the convention tonight with a speech he plans to deliver from the White House. But due to Hurricane Laura, sources tell ABC News the president and his advisors are considering adjusting RNC plans, though for now nothing has changed. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 5.08 and 78 degrees. Still ahead, the latest on a massive piracy ring bust that involves nearly every movie released since the year 2011. And if you're a fan of hard seltzers, Bud has three new, brand new flavors for you to try out. Outside with live cam, we're not getting uh, necessarily any moisture off of this uh, big hurricane here in San Antonio. Just a pretty typical summer morning out there. Mike has more on that coming up. And here's a live look at Galveston right now as Hurricane Laura makes its way there. Our coverage will continue throughout the morning and stay with KSET 12 and KSET.com for any updates. 
and welcome back. It's 512. In your morning consumer headlines, if you like sipping on a seltzer, you've got three more flavors to choose from. So cranberry, grapefruit, and pineapple, Bud Light Seltzer's latest and greatest. Now, a company calling their seltzer line the largest and most successful innovation in Bud Light's 38-year history. They come in a variety pack with fan favorite strawberry along for the ride. Hard seltzers have gotten pretty popular recently. We're talking about 123% growth and 65 brands to choose from. Record low mortgage rates have many people considering refinancing their houses, but uh, many looking to refinance are about to get hit with a new fee. Starting in December, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will be charging a quote, adverse market fee. It adds five, right, rather 0.5% of the total loan amount. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, it ends up being roughly $1,400 on average tacked onto everything else. Federal Housing Finance Agency says the fee is related to coronavirus-related economic uncertainty. It says it's needed to help pay for support given to homeowners through forbearance programs and foreclosure and eviction moratoriums. Loans with balances of less than $125,000 will actually be exempt. And time now is 513 and 78 degrees for now. Up next, the latest on an FDA-approved COVID-19 test that takes less than 15 minutes. And here's a look at what it looks like as Hurricane Laura comes ashore near Orange. Our coverage will continue throughout the morning. You can stay with KSET 12 at KSET.com for the latest updates. People came and they met, they felt comfortable. It's what we did with, with COVID. You felt safe, and if you were safe, you could be joyful. Everybody has a COVID, and almost half those small businesses, they could close if people don't do something. We have to keep our communities together. That's how we get through this. Did you know that some aluminum-free deodorants only mask odor? Secret Aluminum Free helps eliminate odor instead of just masking it and is made with three times more odor fighters. With Secret, odor is one less thing to worry about. Secret. This week at Macy's, get an extra 25% off new fall arrivals when you use your Macy's card or coupon. Plus, buy more, save more on beauty, now at Macy's. And Star Rewards members earn on every purchase except gift cards, services, and fees. 517, our coverage of Hurricane Laura will continue throughout the morning. We'll be checking with Mike Ostrade to get the very latest info coming up. But right now you're looking on lots of rain and some wind there in Galveston, east of Houston. Of course, the situation much worse up in the state of Louisiana, which is now pretty much three quarters covered by the bulk of what is now Category 3 Hurricane Laura. The FDA has approved a COVID-19 test that takes just 15 minutes for results. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the FBA approving an inexpensive COVID-19 test with fast results. The test from drug company Abbott still needs to be administered by a healthcare professional using a nasal swab. It costs just $5 and results come back in 15 minutes. And federal prosecutors have announced a massive movie piracy bust. Authorities in New York charged three men, accusing them of obtaining movies before their release and putting them online. Investigators say The Ring stole nearly every movie released by the major studios since 2011. SpaceX is preparing for another historic day. Elon Musk's company will launch a rocket from Cape Canaveral Friday and attempt to land the booster back on dry land. Other SpaceX launches used a landing pad on the water. SpaceX hopes the use of reusable rockets will enable space tourism in the future. And that was and Kenneth Moten reporting. Yes, ma'am. Let's check traffic right now with Officer Nick Solis. 518, what's the latest, Nick? Uh, right now, things are looking good, Mark. A lot of green there on the screen. Not too much going on right now. Construction clearing up. Still have a little bit, however, on Bandera 1604. But other than that, things are looking great. So let's just go straight to the Trans Guide 10 West at 410. Looks good right now. Traffic's flowing very smooth there. Let's see what else we have here. We're going to go 1604 in Tradesman, 37 at Jones on the southeast side. That's looking really good right now. Definitely a little more traffic than usual. And 281 in Winding Way looking amazing. 
So if you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride. All right, not too bad on the roadways. Thank you, Nick. And Mike's here with an update on Lauren. You said it's now continuing its uh, trend of weakening, even though it's still a pretty good sized storm. Yeah, I mean, just looking at this picture on radar right now, this thing is still packing a punch. You can see a very well-defined eye to this, but it's cut off. It gets all of its energy from the very, very warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. It was like bath water when the thing was moving on through, and that's why it was just, I mean, just going up so high uh, so quickly, I should say, in strength in the past couple of days. But now, as it's over land, it continues to drop down in strength. It's now down to a Category 2 storm. Uh, winds have definitely been uh, dying down. But just think, when it made landfall last night as a very strong Category 4 storm, the wind, sustained wind, was up to about 150 miles per hour with gusts uh, upwards of 180 or even higher than that in some locations. But it has definitely uh, weakened, but still, I mean, obviously packing a punch, and it will continue to weaken very quickly, but it's still going to be a big rain producer working its way up to the north and uh, in toward the mid south and then finally working its way off to the east. Now, one of the biggest problems with this has not necessarily with the wind, obviously with winds that strong uh, in the reading the definition of a category four storm. It means uh, trees are just either uprooted or snapped off and uh, buildings are just destroyed by those winds, but also it was the storm surge and some of the uh, forecast storm surges 10, 15, even close to 20 feet. And there's a couple of different factors that come into play with that storm surge. Obviously, it's the abnormal rise of water over and above predicted tide levels, and it will continue to just kind of work its way up. And like I said, 20 feet rise or higher, obviously devastating impacts. And two things really cause that not only the storm itself and the winds just kind of pushing that water, but also there's a little bit of a kind of a vacuum effect because that storm is a very low area of pressure and it kind of pulls the water up a little bit and causes it to rise somewhat and then gets thrown on inland. So that's why you have those very, very high storm surges. All right, high temperatures yesterday. We made it to 98 degrees here in town, going for a lot more in the way of triple digit temperatures. And I think that's going to be happening here in town. We're going to have a lot of sunshine, a few clouds out there as well as uh, maybe a shower or two. And then the heat index, though, that's really going to be the factor. Those numbers are going to be getting up into the uh, definitely low hundreds over the next couple of days. And as far as rain, well, we may see a couple of showers trying to pop up here and there, kind of on the back side of that storm. But um, this is we're not on the, the rainy side of the storm. We're on the hot side of it because the way things spin in the atmosphere and when you're on the, the left hand side of a storm like that, uh, it he helps to cause the atmosphere to sink a little bit and that helps it to heat up. So that's why we're going to be definitely on the hot side. 93 degrees today at noon with partly cloudy skies, then a high temperature up to 100. It'll feel like the low hundreds couple of showers and I keep saying hope for the best, but don't be disappointed when you don't get any rain. That's going to be the case tomorrow. We will keep triple digits around through the weekend. So the last weekend of August is going out in style and it looks like September is going to be starting off very hot as well. Hopefully a couple of showers by midweek. Hopefully, but we'll prepare for the heat. Exactly. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 522, 78 degrees. And coming up next, the results are in for DC's big fandom event, and it was a super heroic success. We're going to tell you how many people tuned in for the online event. Your pick three numbers, 218, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 9780, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 3, 16, 21, 22, 29. Lotto, Texas, 14, 21, 27, 35, 44, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 8, 12, 19, 47, 58, Powerball 2, Power Play 2. Good luck. And taking a live look at Orange, Texas, right there on the Texas-Louisiana border, our Hurricane Laura coverage will continue with our Justin Horn throughout the morning. Stay with us at KSET 12 and KSET.com for the latest updates. DC Comics celebrating one of its most successful events ever. Here's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. Some famous headwear connected to the notorious B.I.G. is expected to fetch big money at a Sotheby's auction next month. The crown worn by the late rapper in his iconic King of New York photo shoot could fetch up to $300,000, according to Sotheby's. Also included in the auction are 22 signed love letters written by a 16-year-old Tupac Shakur. 
A portion of the sales will go to help New York community groups. DC Fandom is unlike anything you've ever seen before. Last weekend's DC Fandom event was a super heroic success. The online fan event generated an impressive 22 million views across 220 countries and territories. The virtual convention gave DC fans an early look at an upcoming slate of superhero films like Wonder Woman 1984, Black Adam, and The Batman. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. That's a punch. <laughs> Time now, 527 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead in our next half hour, look at how the sports world is responding to the shooting death of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And of course, we're going to get the latest on Hurricane Laura. Meteorologist Justin Horn standing by with a live report. That's coming up right after the. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, August 27th. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Justin Horn has been really busy overnight covering Hurricane Laura. And then here at home, uh, you know, just a little bit humid, a lot more calmer here. Let's get the latest on both of those situations, uh, weather here at home, and we'll check in with Justin in a sec. Good morning, everyone. And, you know, we've been talking about how the, the left-hand side of a storm, in this case, our side, is the calm side. And that's what we are seeing right now. We basically aren't getting anything from this storm directly. I mean, a couple of uh, showers trying to pop up later on today. What it is doing indirectly, though, is helping to heat things up. So it was hot yesterday and it's going to be even hotter today in the next couple of days. And we've got dew point temperatures that have definitely gone up yesterday afternoon. It was nothing like what it was earlier on in the week and even last weekend where we had those lower humidities in the afternoon. So it was very warm and humid and that's going to be the situation again today. Molds on the moderate side. Pigweed is low. Temperature is going for 100 today. Maybe a shower. Again, I keep saying hope for the best, but don't be disappointed if you don't see any rain. Now, here's what it looks like on the satellite radar picture and that is Hurricane Low it did make landfall last night uh, as a very, very strong category four storm. Now, when it's over the land, it continues to weaken, if you will, but it's still a category two storm right now. 110 mile per hour sustained winds, and this will continue to work its way up to the north. It is still packing a punch and right along the Texas Louisiana border. Meteorologist Justin Horn is there, and I do have to say, Justin, first of all, happy birthday, sir. I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it was a long night uh, tracking Hurricane Laura. It was an impressive storm, and Mike can attest to this. On satellite picture, it was a very uh, pretty storm in the sense that it was very symmetrical. We knew it was going to be very powerful, and it certainly was as it came on board in southwestern Louisiana first. Uh, we got the western eye wall, and we saw wind gusts up around 100 miles per hour uh, overnight. Now, the damage that we're seeing, and we've only seen a little bit because we're only seeing what's around us here. We haven't ventured out just yet. We want to be careful about that with power lines and such. We're going to wait till it gets uh, light outside. But the damage that we're seeing looks like it's mostly trees. We saw some transformers blow. Obviously, a lot of people here are without power and probably will be without power for some time. But we're not seeing a whole lot of structural damage, at least around where we are. That may change once we get out and about. Uh, but that uh, sort of jives with the wind speeds that we were talking about, somewhere around 100 miles per hour. Now, as you go east towards Lake Charles uh, into Louisiana, it's a completely different story. They saw winds gusting potentially up to 130 miles per hour there, and there probably is some structural damage uh, in those areas. Again, we'll find out uh, a little bit later today. But uh, it has been, again, a busy night. Uh, we're going to continue to track Laura. The rain is starting to wind down here. Winds are starting to die down, too, which is great news. That's the latest from here in Orange. Reporting live, Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. All right, everyone, right now, if you're heading to work, expect a smooth ride. Things are looking good out there. Just dealing with one accident right now. This is going to be northbound lanes of IH35 South at Division Avenue. Not much details yet on this accident other than it's involving three vehicles, not causing any traffic delays, however, but just keep that in mind if you're heading that in that direction. Trans Guide 1604 Tradesman still looking good there on the northwest side. Southeast side, 37 to Jones, flowing very smoothly. 281 at Winding Way now in the north. Looking great, and we'll do one more here. Let's see what we have. 281 and 410 northeast side near the airport, flowing very smoothly. Mark, Stephanie? Now back to late, uh, local late breaking news. Several people have been arrested after a shooting early this morning at a strip club on the city's north side, not far from San Antonio International Airport. It happened just after three this morning. Our Katrina Weber is live there with the details. Katrina. 
Well, good morning. I just want to point out that no one has been arrested at this time. Police tell me that they have several people in custody and they are looking at possibly charging the man who they have as the suspect. He is a man who's in the hospital because he was shot here this morning outside XTC Cabaret. Now, let me look to, let me give you a look at what is going on right now. Uh, we have police here still investigating this shooting, which happened about 3.15 this morning. They say that there was a fight inside the club, bottles broken, people throwing punches. Security escorted all of those people out of the club, but then they believe one of those people came back with an AK-47 and began firing at the club. No one was hit by that gunfire, but security guards then returned fire and hit the man with the AK-47. He was uh, shot in his upper body and his arm, taken to University Hospital, and police say his injuries are not life-threatening. But they do expect to file charges against him. They have several people detained who they are questioning regarding what happened. But none of those people is facing any charges at this point. So there are no other arrests at this time. But they say, they did tell me that if, it, if the man uh, who did the shooting was not in the hospital, he would be in handcuffs. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Protesters have been taking to the streets since Sunday's shooting of a man in Wisconsin. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the sports world, or excuse me, the sports world now getting involved by not suiting up for action. The National Basketball Association is protesting the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Listen, three cops, one guy. There's got to be a better way than him getting shot in the back seven times. Some basketball stars like LeBron James have been sounding off on social media. But on Wednesday, the league, following the lead of the Milwaukee Bucks, decided to put its postseason on hold. It's all the NBA together, and that came together within a, just a couple hour time period, showing the great leadership of the NBA, understanding the magnitude of the situation. Shortly afterward, other pro sports organizations, including some Major League Baseball teams, followed suit. As a white player on this team is how can we show support? What's something tangible that we can do to help our black brothers on this team? Former President Barack Obama, among those applauding the move, tweeting it's going to take all of our institutions to stand up for our values. But CNN sports analyst Bob Costas says this walkout could lead to a backlash. Some will resent it. Some will say, I'm not going to watch anymore. I've had it up to here. They said it, said it with Colin Kaepernick. They've said it with Black Lives Matter. President Trump tweeted Wednesday that he'll be sending the National Guard to Kenosha to restore law and order. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Here at home, residents in the Delview community are seeing small progress when it comes to dealing with the homeless epidemic in their area. For years, residents have complained about the growing number of encampments in and around residences and shopping centers in the area of Vance Jackson and I-10. Well, this summer, District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino launched a pilot program that brings police, city services, and social workers to the Vance Jackson corridor to speak directly with those homeless individuals. So far, 30 people have been connected with services. The city says they want a long-term solution, and that takes time. What I'd want the city and the community to understand is that these are people, right? Um, and that their experiences, their story, their trauma, it's each person, like I said, it's an individual basis. And before we start trying to say what we can do as a community, it would be helpful if they understood the humanity of that person and to have patience with the resources and to have patience with the process. The city is looking to expand the program to all 10 districts next year. District 8 is hosting a virtual town hall meeting Thursday evening. You can head to KSAT.com for information and a link. In other headlines this morning, when it comes to anti-maskers, federal health officials say do not argue. That's what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is recommending to retail and service employees. It's part of new guidance that came out this week on limiting workplace violence. The CDC says if someone doesn't want to wear a mask, don't argue with them, especially if they make threats or become violent. They also suggest businesses look into conflict resolution training for their workers, security cameras, and pick out special areas in the store where they can go to if they do not feel safe. Tesla CEO Elon Musk just became the fourth richest man in the world. Earlier this month, Tesla's stock closed at an all-time high, boosting Musk's net worth up to $85 billion. 
In case you're wondering about the others at the top of the list, as of this week, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos maintains the top spot worth about $197 billion. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates in number two with $123 billion. And Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg is next with $106 billion net worth. And time now, 539 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead, how much is too much when it comes to kids' screen time? We'll break down recommendations by health experts. And coming up next, hurricane season will last until the end of November. So we have a breakdown of what you need to know as more storms approach the U.S. And outside with live cam. Obviously, we're tracking Laura, but we need to get you updated on the extreme heat here in South Texas as we're getting closer to the end of month of August. Thank goodness you're watching DMSA. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June to the end of November during the warmest part of the year. And the reason for that is the water really needs to warm up for the first step when it comes to a tropical storm formation. That water needs to be at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit in order to really start the process of hurricane formation. Warm air will rise over that warm water and that allows for evaporation, which eventually results in unorganized thunderstorms. Now those unorganized Organized thunderstorms will eventually form and become a little bit more organized when that warm air, which goes up high in the atmosphere where it's really cold, becomes cold and starts to sink. That increases winds and actually starts rotation. And eventually you have a really organized center of low pressure. That's when strong winds develop uh, and that eye develops, that characteristic eye develops around tropical storms and hurricanes. And the more clearly you can see that eye, the more developed that storm system is. Uh, and unfortunately, hurricanes are actually one of the dangerous and most deadliest form of weather that our Mother Earth can create. But that's a little example on how hurricanes form. And again, just a reminder, tropical storm season in the Atlantic lasts through the end of November. And here's a live look at Orange right there on the Texas-Louisiana border. Our coverage on Hurricane Laura will continue throughout the morning. You can stay with KSET 12 and KSET.com for the latest updates. Looks like the rain continues there. And as we get closer to sunrise, we'll start to get a better idea of the scope of the damage from Hurricane Laura. Yes, we'll be checking in with Justin as the time goes along. 544, 78 degrees. And still ahead, the debate continues about the value and potential harm of screen time for kids, even as more children Children are doing more schoolwork online. And we take a live look outside right now and you can see that uh, everything is very, very calm out there. We are definitely, as we were talking about, on the, the left hand side of this storm and this is where you don't see much activity and actually this thing's uh, helping to heat things up. But it's still a very well defined storm. It's moving off very, very quickly up to the north, which is good news. It's not just sitting in one spot. And by the way, uh, earlier this morning, Justin Horn had said that things were starting to kind of die down as far as the rain is concerned. And yes, it has finally moved past. He's right there in orange just along the uh, Texas Louisiana border right along uh, I-10 down to a category two yesterday late yesterday and uh, we hours this morning it did make landfall as a very strong category four storm now 110 mile per hour winds and being over land it's going to continue to die down continue to weaken in the next uh, few hours around here so actually by about uh, noon or early afternoon it's still going to be a hurricane though I mean we're still going to have winds upwards of about 75 to 80 miles per hour and then it will just be a big rainmaker and a lot of wind moving through the uh, Mid-South in the Ohio Valley. And we talk about how we are on the dry side of the storm. And as you can see, there is the storm moving on through and here's all the dry air in our area and kind of sinking air. And so that's what's going to help us to really heat up. We got very hot yesterday up in the upper 90s. There was plenty in the way of humidity out there, and that's going to be the case as well. Now, if you do get a shower or thunderstorm, could have fairly decent downpour, but the question is, are you going to get rain? Probably not. Uh, rain chances are 
slim to none at best, maybe a 20% chance. This is what the uh, uh, future cast looks like as far as rain chances, which you can almost count them on one hand out there. That's going to be the situation through the afternoon hours and then into dinner time. And then once the sun goes down, everything is pretty much going to be dying down. Perhaps the similar situation tomorrow, but not very likely with that. Here's what it looks like on the satellite and radar. And again, the storm way off to the right hand side. I just keep this this vantage point to show you that it's not really in our vicinity. We it's close, but not close enough to give us anything as far as any uh, any decent weather around here. It's just going to be hot. It's just going to be humid. We're going to be up to the low 90s today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today going to make it up to 100. We didn't hit that yesterday. It was 98. We were in the triple digits day before that, and I think we're going to be starting another stretch of triple digit temperatures tomorrow in through the weekend. Again, a shower or two is possible. Not very likely, though. Plenty of sunshine, hot temperatures over the weekend, and perhaps a couple more showers by the middle part of next week. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Solis. Anything uh, big going on we should know about? We've got another major accident right now, Mike. So dealing with two major accidents. The one that just came in is going to be on Micron Drive and Reed Road near 410 Petrenko area. It looks like a vehicle rode over there. Uh, not going to cause too much traffic delays, but definitely if you do live in that neighborhood, keep that in mind. It could slow uh, you down and heading to the schools there. All right, still working on this accident. Northbound I-35 at Division Avenue. Looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to get cleared up very soon and not causing too much traffic build up there, so that's always good news. All right, trans guide time. 35 at Evans looking good right now. Traffic definitely started to pick up in those southbound lanes, though. 37 and I-10. We had some construction there earlier. That looks good. And 1604 in Old Hausman. Looks like that construction is now cleared up as well. All right, everyone, please have a safe day and remember, wear that seatbelt. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Nick. The debate over uh, how much screen time is healthy has been going on since the dawn of television, and it continues as more and more young people interact with screen based technology. And that's right. Children are growing up using tablets and smartphones, and now with virtual learning, these screens are being looked at more frequently than before. Max Massey shows us there are benefits, risks and recommendations linked to all this screen time. Right now, children spend more than two hours a day watching TV and even more time playing with apps, video games, and smartphones. While television has gone down slightly, smartphone, tablet, and social media usage have all gone up. Much of the debate about the value and the potential harm of the screen time revolves around children's screen-based entertainment and fun activities. Less emphasis on that learning factor, but there are good things about all this screen time as well. Things like building modern skills that help prepare children for college and careers. You have unlimited learning and creating. People 30 years ago would have to go to an encyclopedia, go to the library, use a dictionary if they wanted any information. We have a limitless database at our fingertips. Next, communicating. During this pandemic, a lot of interaction was limited to things like Zoom, Skype, and Facebook. But remember, there are some possible risks of screen time as well increasing rates of childhood obesity, engaging in risky or aggressive behavior, developing attention problems, screen addiction, sleep disorders, and language and developmental delays. So let's go over some basic recommendations from the American Pediatric Association. For kids younger than 18 months, try to avoid the use of screen media other than video chatting with remote friends and family. If your children are 18 to 24 months old, Digital media can be introduced briefly, but it should be limited to high quality education programming and caregivers should view the media with the child, helping them understand what exactly they're seeing. Children should not watch alone. And for children two to five years old, you should limit screen time to just one hour a day of high quality programs. Things like educational games, web apps, and programming. And for kids six to 17 years old, place consistent limits on the time spent using media and on the types of media they're using. Make sure that screen time does not take place of adequate sleep, physical activity, and other behaviors essential to common day health. Remember though, not all screen time is the same. Reading a book on a Kindle or doing homework on the computer, not the same as scrolling through Instagram. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Just now about 553, 78 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, two, one, eight, fireball two, daily four, nine, seven, eight, zero, fireball one. And cash five numbers, three, 16, 21, 22, 29, lotto Texas, 14, 21, 27, 35, 44, 52. And don't forget about powerball, eight, 12, 19, 47, 58, powerball two, power play, also two. 
The pandemic and stay-at-home orders have taken a toll on many businesses. Cultural institutions are not exempt. A recent survey shows that one-third of all U.S. museums are in danger of closing for good. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more. Even in good times, those in the museum industry will tell you they operate on a thin budget. When they all shuttered very suddenly back in March, I was scared for the field. Laura Laud is president and CEO of the American Alliance of Museums. In June, the organization surveyed 750 museum directors across the U.S. She says the results confirmed her worst fears. One in three museum directors reported that there's significant risk of their having to close permanently or that they just don't know if or how they can survive absent some you know, additional financial relief in the coming months. Lott says many museums remain closed or only partially open. Those with outdoor space like botanical gardens or zoos are faring better than those that are indoors and interactive like science centers and children's museums. She says the industry accounts for three quarters of a million jobs, contributes $50 billion to the economy each year, and many benefited from PPP loans in the spring, but now that money is running out. The longer, you know, the, the pandemic uh, goes on, the more museums, I'm afraid, we actually are at risk of losing permanently. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Still ahead the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, the very latest on Hurricane Laura as it barrels its way through western Louisiana, not far from the Texas border. You're looking live at Orange, Texas, right there on the border where the rain continues. We'll be checking out our Justin Horn, who has been up all night long tracking Laura, coming up right here on GMSA. And as we go to break, a quick look at the roads with Transguide. Increased traffic flow for sure. We'll get the latest from Officer Nick Solis with Time Saver Traffic. While the worst may be over here, we're still seeing some gusty winds in Orange, Texas, and we'll likely be looking at a lot of damage. We have a live report coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 77 degrees, a little humid here, of course, a lot more active to the east. We're gonna check in with Mike and also have a live report from Justin in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is August 27th. Thanks so much for starting your morning with us. And yes, it has been a busy mor morning. We've been following Justin, who's been tracking Hurricane Laura all overnight. Been very busy. Of course, he is right there on the Texas Louisiana border. We're going to be checking in with him in just a moment. Let's bring in Mike Osterhage, kind of set things up for how the rest of our day is looking and the very latest on Laura, which continues to weaken. Mike. Correct. It is uh, continuing to move, made landfall last night as a category four storm, very strong storm. We are on the, uh, the sinking side of that storm, which means it helps to heat things up. We don't get much of any rain out there. Uh, temperatures right now, the heat index is at 79 degrees. We've got lots of humidity. That's Definitely going to greet you as you step out the door this morning. Molds moderate. Pigweed is on the low side and going to make it up to 100 later on today. Maybe just a couple of showers out there. Now, Hurricane Laura, it is still considered a category two hurricane with winds about 105 miles per hour, but obviously it has continued to weaken when it made landfall as that category four uh, sustained winds were about 150 miles per hour, almost on the verge of becoming a category five storm. And there were also wind gusts last night upwards of about 180 to 185. Still seeing uh, 150 mile per hour wind gusts with this storm. And this is what it looks like on the satellite radar picture as it may land and continues to move up to the north very, very quickly. And obviously it's dumping a lot of rain. The storm surge has been very, very high. And Justin Horn was right in the thick of things. As you can see, the eye of that storm passed right to the east of his location there in Orange. And this is what it looked like when uh, things moved through. Justin. It's around 1230 here in Orange, and we've really seen the winds pick up now, it's seeing some big time gusts anywhere from 60 to potentially 70 miles per hour. A lot of rain as well. The storm is about, at least the eye of the storm, is about 30 miles to our south and east. We're expecting to get the western side of the eye wall. And as we speak, we're starting to see the power flicker here. We may lose power, expecting to lose power overnight as these winds continue to pick up. It's 1 a.m. here in Orange, and the eye wall is about 15 miles to our 
east and southeast. We are on the west side of the eye wall right now and winds are very strong, but not as strong as they could be. Uh, looks like this storm is actually moving due north. We'll get just brushed by the eye wall. Our friends off to the east though, much stronger winds. Places like Lake Charles getting battered by this storm uh, this morning. And we're told that many people there are Lake Charles without power. You see trees come down in spots. We're keeping an eye on the power lines uh, here off in the distance. Tree interacting with the power lines. You can see the, the sparks up there. It, it looks like this storm is almost moving due north. So it's gonna move probably right up Sabine River. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. We're gonna be uh, get out of the way of that. It is 1.30 and we're in the worst of the storm, worst of Hurricane Laura as she's pushing off to the north. The eye wall moving just to our east. We're seeing some very strong winds here, gusts up to 80, 90, potentially even 100 miles per hour where we are. Uh, we have seen some damaged trees toppled, uh, power lines going down, and we're likely gonna see more of that as we go into the rest of the night. And when dawn breaks tomorrow, We'll be looking probably at a lot of damage here in Orange. It's 2 a.m. and we are within the eye wall of Hurricane Laura as it moves almost due north. The eye about 8 to 10 miles to our east. Uh, we've seen winds now, uh, very strong winds for about an hour or so, and we're likely seeing some gusts up to around 100 miles per hour where we are in Orange. This is going to create some widespread damage. We've already seen a ton of trees down, power lines down, and by the time we get into tomorrow morning, we're likely going to be looking at quite a bit of damage where we are in Orange. We probably got another hour or so of these very strong winds before things start to subside a little bit and Hurricane Laura continues to move off to the north. As of now, winds have calmed considerably. The rain has stopped, and we're going to be able to assess the damage here in just a little bit once the sun comes up, guys. And we're expecting that, again, as we said, there will be quite a bit of damage here. Back to you. Now, Justin, it does seem quite a bit calmer right now. I know today is your birthday, but that, that power line touching the tree behind you there probably aged you a little bit too, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it absolutely did. Uh, yeah, we got out of the way of that pretty quickly. Now, I should point out, it was it was well behind us. It looked right. pretty dramatic, but uh, it was it was about 100 feet or so behind wow. us, but it did, uh, did make us jump a little bit. Don't know if you know this because you've been up all night, Jester, but that clip is actually going viral and made yep. national news <laughs> earlier this morning. I heard. I heard. <laughs> uh, I, don't know how, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I know. Well, Justin, we are glad yeah. you are safe. Uh, we had a quick question. I know in your coverage yesterday, you were talking sure. about evacuees, uh, you know, in the area. Just and you were telling us that a lot of people actually chose to stay because uh, of the pandemic. Uh, what are you seeing now? Yeah, you know, we haven't seen anyone come out of their houses yet, and you know, it's probably a good idea to stay put for now. But we were surprised at how many people opted to stay. And in fact, we talked to some people who. Uh, they went and hunkered down in a bar here just down the street. There was about 10 to 15 people inside that bar. They had their pillows. Uh, it was a good spot to be. They felt it was sturdy enough. Uh, quite a few people here in Orange opted to stay and ride out this storm. Hopefully, we'll find out later this morning that everyone is okay. That, would, that would be yeah. good to know, and we know you'll provide us updates. What a way to spend a birthday, Justin Horde. Thank you so much. Live from Orange over there on Thank the Texas-Louisiana border. Yes, happy birthday, Justin. Let's check out traffic right now at exactly 6.07. How's and there's it? Nick. Hey, Mark. What is up? How, so right now, we are dealing with one major accident right now. Uh, we just had this one populated on the screen. This is Micron Drive and Reed Road. It looks like a vehicle rollover there. SAPD is on scene. Hopefully, they can get that cleared up soon. All right, Trans Guy 35 and Benzingelman looking good right now. Traffic flowing very smoothly there and all around the city. 35 and 410 the same. Look at the traffic. Looks good right now. No construction. 35 and 1604. That looks good as well and we'll do one more here. We got 35 at Evans. Southbound lanes a little moderate as well as northbound lanes, but still things look good out there. Mark, Stephanie, Thank you, Nick. We know there are some Hurricane Laura evacuees here in our area. They are in shelters and they do need assistance, and that means volunteers. Red Cross is looking for more. Our KSAT community partners teaming up with the Red Cross to get the word out. 
And Kata Community will also host a phone bank tomorrow to help with relief efforts. That phone bank will be collecting donations from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. You can find more information and any applications to help right now on ksetcommunity.com. And throughout the day, you can find the latest updates on Hurricane Laura on KSAT.com. Catch up the latest for our meteorologist, Justin Horn. See the camera shots from Galveston and learn more about the evacuation orders and evacuees right here in San Antonio. All that information is available to you right now on our home homepage and on our app. Well, there is other news this morning. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting outside a Northside strip club. They say the man who was shot also had been firing a weapon. Our Katrina Weber is live in the area near Broadway and Loop 410. Now, Katrina, we understand this started with a fight inside the club. Well, that's right. This is the Ecstasy Cabaret Club. I did spoke, speak to some of the women who work here as well as police. They say there were bottles broken, fists flying, and after security escorted a group of people involved in that fight outside, that's when the gunfire broke out. And police have been here ever since. This started about 3.15 this morning. That's when they got the call. Uh, they say that, again, there was a fight inside the club, a group escorted out, and then they say one man in that group went and got an AK-47, started shooting at the club. A security guard fired back, hitting that man with the AK-47 in his arm and upper body. He was taken to a hospital for treatment. Police say his wounds were not life-threatening. No one else here at the club uh, was hit by any of the gunfire, but those workers that I spoke to said that they were definitely afraid. They say that they all ran in the back, got down on the ground to get out of the, the line of fire and uh, kind of huddled there. They were kept inside the club, in fact, uh, well past the time that they were supposed to be allowed to go home. And again, police still here investigating this scene. They say they do have some people who they have detained for questioning, but at this time they have not made any other arrests. They do expect to file charges against the man who's in the hospital, the man who they say had the AK-47. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a shooter on the northeast side. Police say it happened in the 2300 block of Austin Highway, which is just south of Perimbital Road. Officers tell us a man was shot in the leg about 930 last night. That man rushed to Bamsey. Police are questioning the victim in the hospital to get more information about the shooter. Police are also talking to a driver this morning. They say he was involved in a rollover crash just north of downtown. Happened around 1040 last night at McCullough and Brooklyn. Two vehicles collided, causing a black SUV to roll over. There it is. A driver in the SUV taken to a nearby hospital. The driver in the other vehicle is being questioned by police. Metro Health reporting 134 new cases of COVID-19 in San Antonio. In addition, health officials reported 13 new deaths last night. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says those deaths occurred between June 21st and this past Tuesday. Right now, the seven-day average in San Antonio is 137 cases per day. Local officials say that COVID-19 protocol will be followed as thousands of evacuees come to San Antonio to get away from Hurricane Laura. 6 11, 77 degrees. And the NBA postseason could be in jeopardy after the league postponed all the games yesterday. Players did not go out on the court protesting the police shooting of Jacob Blake in Wisconsin. Tonight, President Donald Trump himself expected to accept the presidential nomination from the Republican Party. We have a look at what to expect for tonight and the top moments from last night. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Actually, this is this is a live look in Galveston as we continue our coverage with Hurricane Laura. Of course, we're going to have another live update from Justin in just a bit. Six fifteen. Welcome back to GMSA. Vice President Mike Pence closed out night three of the Republican National Convention, accepting the nomination for vice president. President Donald Trump is expected to accept the nomination for president tonight. ABC's Ines de la Quatera has the latest. Good morning. There was little mention of the COVID-19 pandemic last night, while Vice President Pence defended the president's response to the crisis. Overnight, Vice President Pence taking center stage at the RNC. The choice in this election is whether America remains America. 
Speaking from Fort McHenry in Baltimore, the vice president addressed a crowd that, for the most part, was not wearing face masks as he tried to put a positive spin on the president's COVID-19 response, even as the U.S. reports nearly 180,000 coronavirus deaths. To bring America all the way back, we need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. What Joe doesn't seem to understand is that America is a nation of miracles. Biden camped slamming Pence, writing in a statement he used debunked scare tactics and gaslighting to try and further divide the country. This, as we're learning, at least one of the immigrants featured in a naturalization ceremony that aired on Tuesday night did not know the video would be used at the convention or that President Trump would even attend. The president is set to close out the convention tonight with a speech he plans to deliver from the White House. But due to Hurricane Laura, sources tell ABC News the president and his advisors are considering adjusting RNC plans, though for now, nothing has changed. Inez de Liquitera, ABC News, Washington. Time check now 617. Let's go ahead and check the roads with Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, dealing with another accident. So we have two major accidents right now we're dealing with. So this one just came out right here. It's going to be eastbound U.S. Highway 90 west at Driftwood Street. Looks like it's there on the main lanes. A two vehicle accident where a vehicle hit the guardrail. This one may cause some traffic buildup, so keep that in mind if you're heading eastbound 90 towards 35. All right, still working on this accident, uh, a Micron drive in Reed Road with a rollover vehicle. Uh, hopefully this gets cleared up soon as well. Trans guide looking good. 37 at Jones, southeast side flowing very smoothly right now. 281 in Winding Way in the north side. Look at that. Traffic looks great over there and 281 in Loop 410 northeast by the airport. Man, that looks great as well. At least those areas are looking good. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you, Nick. And right now we're going to take a quick look, I believe, at Galveston, where it's been a soggy start to the morning. And Mike, uh, Laura came ashore as a very strong Category 4 stain, but storm rather, but has continued to weaken as it moves further inland. Right, which is usually the case. I mean, it's cut off from the... Uh, and there's um, Galveston, Mike. Yeah, there, there's a live look at Galveston. And Galveston was obviously on the, the left-hand side of the storm. So, yes, packing a punch. And it looks to be like it's still fairly windy out there. Um, are those some breaks in the clouds as well, perhaps? Per maybe. And uh, like I said, it's on the left-hand side of that storm. Now the storm continues to work its way up to the uh, north. And once it's over land, obviously it weakens because it's cut off from its uh, its energy source, which is the, the bath water, basically, that it was going through in the Gulf of Mexico. And throughout the course of the day yesterday, uh, you know, this thing was just gaining strength by leaps and bounds. And a lot of us were thinking that it might reach Category 5 status as it made land. It was just shy of that, uh, about 150 mile per hour winds as it made landfall 157 is the the jump into the category five status so it was a very strong category four storm and as you can see it continues to work its way up to the north and almost looks like it's kind of falling apart so obviously that's going to be the situation it's not going to have the classic hurricane characteristic that uh, that eye anymore like it did as it moved on shore so 105 mile per hour winds category two storm it continues to weaken as it works its way up to the north but it's still going to be uh, packing a punch with winds and some heavy rain and that'll be the situation all the way in through the mid south now down here at the surface wind being reported uh, sustained winds 30 close to 40 miles per hour and there's the the center of that storm just about to, right along the Texas Louisiana border and it continues to move its way up to the uh, to the north. Now as far as we are concerned we always talk about how the the right hand side of the storm is where you get more of the rain and the left hand side of the storm is where you don't and here's a perfect example. There's the storm moving on in that classic eye wall. Now that's kind of collapsing as the storm weakens. There's all the clouds off to the east more of the rain. We have got very, very dry air. This is the water vapor imagery looking at the mid upper levels of the atmosphere. Also, the atmosphere sinks a little bit and that means you heat up. Now, dry air as far as upstairs in the atmosphere, not down here at the surface. It is extremely humid and hopefully some of that humidity is going to get squeezed out in the form of rain. Rain chances are almost slim to none. I mean, there'll be a few of them popping up throughout the mid afternoon hours uh, into dinner time, early evening. 
If you get one of these showers, again, could have a decent downpour, but most, most of us aren't going to be seeing anything as far as any rain is concerned. So there is the uh, the hurricane continues to move up into the Mid-South, and it'll still be a good rainmaker up into the Ohio Valley. The high, which is basically covering the southern portion of the country, the Bermuda High, is going to stay in place. We will have little disturbances trying to move on in here Sunday, maybe toward the middle part of the week couple of showers here and there, but we just don't have anything that's bringing about any real substantial changes, not only as far as temperatures are concerned or as far as rain is concerned. 93 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. Normal high is 95, so we're almost up to that already at noon, and then we're going to make it up to, I think it's a safe bet to go up to 100 today. Mostly sunny, a couple of showers scattered about here and there. Same thing tomorrow over the weekend. It stays very hot, very humid. We're going to be dealing with heat index readings well up into the low hundreds. Possibly some heat advisories, just kind of a guess on my part, may be issued for parts of the area over the next few days and a couple of showers maybe by midweek next week. And you said even uh, if we get a couple showers today, they're not directly associated with Laura. That's far enough away, right? Right. I mean, this is going to be kind of the, the pop up thing. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's, it's the indirect effects from the heat because the air sinks on this side of the storm. So okay. that's what we get from it. All right, back to the triple digits. Thank you, Mike. 622, 77 degrees on your Thursday morning. And the NBA season appears to be on hold, but not because of COVID-19. Players are protesting the police shooting of Jacob Blake. We'll find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Humera patients, this one's for you. You inspired us to make your Humera experience even better with Humera Citrate Free. It has the same effectiveness you know and trust, but we remove the citrate buffers. There's less liquid and a thinner needle with less pain immediately following injection. Ask your doctor about Humera Citrate Free, and you can use your copay card to pay as little as $5 a month. Humera can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections, including tuberculosis and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humera if you have an infection. Ask your doctor about Humera Citrate Free, the same Humera you trust with less pain immediately following injection. If you can't afford your medicine, AbbVie may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, walk out. The NBA postseason is in doubt following the police-involved shooting of Jacob Blake. LeBron James reportedly walking out of the meeting after voting to stop the season. Me being African-American in, in America and to see um, what continues to happen with the police brutality towards my kind is very troubling. This coming after the Milwaukee Bucks announced they would not be playing. Our focus today cannot be on basketball. According to investigators, Officer Rustin Chesky is seen here in these videos following Blake to the driver's side of his car and appearing to lean in when Chesky opens fire. Authorities now saying police were responding to a call from a woman who said her boyfriend was not supposed to be on the premises. Family members say Blake was trying to de-escalate an argument between two women. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live interview with Stephen A. Smith. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Hey, over in Beaumont, a billboard company sliced through its ads to get ready for Hurricane Laura. Lamar Advertising says many of its billboards have a hurricane frame without panels. Crews try to remove the vinyl signage, but if there's not enough time, they just slice right through it. This is so the hurricane force winds can blow through the signs and hopefully leave the structures standing. And mandatory and voluntary evacuations have been ordered for several Texas cities and counties. Right now on KSET.com, we have an article with a list of places with those evacuation orders, their routes, and until when they are in effect. For more information, you can head over to our website at KSET.com and find the article under the local news tab. Busy news and weather morning right now, 627, 77 degrees. And a live look at Galveston this morning. Justin Horn will join us again in the next half hour to tell us about 
Hurricane Laura and how Texas communities are faring after the storm. Looks like it's actually trying to clear there in Galveston. That's good news there. Bottles broken, fists flying, and then gunfire. That was the scene at this Northside Strip Club. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I will tell you more about it. Hurricane Laura battered the city of Orange overnight. We're still seeing some gusty winds and we're gonna be looking at a lot of damage. We have a live report coming up. We can't make you leave and you decided this on your own so you can stay, but you are on your own. Don't dial 911, no one is gonna answer. And guess what? It's you and God. And that was the mayor of the city of Port Arthur, who says about 30% of the community decided to stay in the coastal town despite evacuation warnings. And then here at home, where you're not seeing any direct impact from Hurricane Laura, a few wispy clouds out there as the sun is trying to come up on your Thursday. It is August 27th, and we have a lot to talk about in the weather department this morning. Yes, we do. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. And let's go ahead and check in with Mike first. Yeah, uh, not actually much to talk about as far as locally. Obviously, it's a beautiful start to the morning. It is humid out there, though. We have dew points now back up into the 70s. They're on a good chunk of the area, even upper 60s in parts of the uh, hill country. So you'd notice it when you step outside this morning. Molds on the uh, moderate side and pigweed is low. Hurricane Laura, it is still considered a category two hurricane. 105 mile per hour winds, of course, when it made landfall, uh, it hit at about 150 mile per hour sustained winds. This is a very strong category four storm. So obviously it's weakening being over land, but it's still packing a bunch. Still very strong winds. It will continue to work its way up to the north, uh, even into Arkansas as a category one hurricane. This is what it looked like in the past uh, 12 hours as it moved on shore. And as you can see, there was a very distinct eye, which basically went right over Lake Charles, just to the east of the uh, Louisiana Texas border, right there in the city of Orange. And it looks like the rain has pretty much uh, stopped right there as of right now, but it was definitely kind of on the just the western edge of the eye wall. That's where Justin Horn is, and he's going to re be reporting live from there in just a couple of moments. But first of all, we're going to check out traffic, time saver traffic, and Officer Nick Solis. And what's going on out there? Well, not much right now, Mike. We just as trans guy, things are looking good. A couple of accidents, but other than that, things look great right now in the city. Going straight here to trans guy 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds. Look at that. Looks wonderful right now. Uh, let's head right here to, oh, oh, sorry, my graphics. That's not the right graphics, but still, things are looking good out there right now. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Nick. We'll get back to you with an update on time saver traffic. As uh, Mike just mentioned moments ago, Hurricane Laura is now down to a Category 2, but very powerful hurricane moving inland. However, it did make landfall overnight near the Texas and Louisiana border as a Category 4 storm. Our Justin Horn has been covering the storm all night long from Southeast Texas. Joins us live this morning from Orange over there on the Texas-Louisiana border. Justin, good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you guys, and we're starting to see some light on the horizon, so this is going to give us a much better idea of what we're dealing with here as far as damage. I suspect we're going to see a lot of trees down, and that's probably going to be the main concern here. Winds last night, probably somewhere in the range of 90 to 100 miles per hour where we are here in Orange during the peak of the hurricane. We were on the western edge of the eye wall. And we got some of those big time winds. Now, not as strong as the winds we saw or uh, that they saw off to the east around Lake Charles, but enough to do some damage around here. We can see some of the houses that are around us here that uh, basically uh, there's a ton of trees down, probably taking some power lines uh, with it as, uh, as those uh, trees came down. Uh, again, we're starting to see some light on the horizon. Uh, we'll probably get the storm chaser out, drive around, see what we see as far as uh, damage here in Orange. And it's not just Orange. Uh, Beaumont, part, Port Arthur, the whole Golden Triangle. It's an area that was hit pretty hard by Hurricane Laura. And what a monster storm. I mean, this was a huge, huge storm. Nearly went Cat 5 when it made landfall. In places in southwestern Louisiana, not going to be in good shape today. Uh, they likely sustained some catastrophic damage there. Not only did they see winds, they saw incredible storm surge. Uh, we didn't see as much in the way of storm surge here, thankfully. Uh, but again, we'll uh, we'll be assessing the damage. We'll bring you some reports coming up a little bit later today, guys. And Justin, right now things look a lot calmer, you know, behind you as they did earlier. Mm -hmm. you, you guys were in the middle of, you know, very very strong winds, and so it was pretty impactful for you there as well. 
Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and we, we found a good spot last night to hunker down, made sure that uh, we were sheltered from the winds and we were away from trees and, and power lines. And uh, we were able to safely uh, stay out of harm's way last night as, as Hurricane Laura came through. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there were a lot of people here in Orange that opted to stay. Uh, we'll also be finding out this morning how they fared. Hopefully everyone doing OK this morning, guys. And yeah, tricky to get around to even on Transguide here in San Antonio this morning. Justin, it's saying that I-10 is closed over there on the Texas Louisiana border and that uh, truck traffic is supposed to go all the way up 35 and over I-20 through parts of northern Louisiana. All right, Justin, thank you very much. And by the way, again, happy birthday. A weird way to be spending your birthday <laughs> on the road covering a major hurricane. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Well, he mentioned uh, Port Arthur, or rather Beaumont. Some of the hurricane evacuees that have come to San Antonio are from the Port Arthur area. That is a coastal city on the border with Louisiana. The mayor of Port Arthur told people who decide to stay that it is, quote, just between you and God. Local services, including emergency services like 911, would not be working. Port Arthur's mayor also has some advice for anyone who is seeking refuge here in the Alamo City. Stay put, plan to stay there for another three to five days, I would say. Okay, and the reason why I'm saying that because we don't know the severity of what is going to ha happen or from the impact of law. And we'll know that, but we won't be able to assess that until Friday. Meanwhile, hotels around San Antonio called in extra staff to help with the influx of people uh, seeking refuge from Hurricane Laura. And right now you can find the latest updates from Hurricane Laura on KSET.com throughout the day. We're going to have all that information right now on our homepage. San Antonio police saying things got especially heated at a Northside strip club overnight. They say a man thrown out for fighting sprayed the building with gunfire, but then he was shot himself. Katrina Weber live outside Ecstasy Cabaret near 410 and Broadway. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that this happened around 3 this morning. Shouldn't that business have been closed by 2 a.m.? Well, I asked that question of police and they say that apparently this business does not have a TABC license, which would regulate that they would have to shut down at two. They don't serve alcohol here, so they're not under those regulations to shut down at two o'clock. But right here now, I just wanted to point out uh, what's been going on. We had a bit of a commotion just a few minutes ago. There was a man who seemed very agitated. He was yelling that his friend had been shot. Police trying to calm him down. Uh, things got pretty heated. Uh, it seems that they have dis diffused the situation, but that was not the case earlier when there was gunfire here involving someone else. I believe we may have some video to show you. If not, uh, you can see what's still going on here. Uh, the police say they got called here about 3.15 this morning. There was a fight that had been going on inside the club. Some people, some patrons involved in that fight, uh, they threw those people out. Apparently, uh, the security ushered them out and then after that point, one of the people, police say, came back with an AK-47, started shooting at the building. A security guard returned fire, hitting the man with the AK-47 in his shoulder and upper body. He was taken to the hospital. Police say he does not have life-threatening injuries. No one else here injured by the gunfire, but they have had several people who they've been talking to. They have those people in custody. And again, uh, one of the people they were talking to here was very agitated a little while ago, uh, but police seem to have calmed things down now. Reporting live from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. 639, 77 degrees. And with everyone at home, there could be plenty of distractions while your child is learning on Zoom. After the break, we're going to hear from Northside ISD's Director of Academic Technology about remote learning etiquette. And outside with live cam, all calm and quiet here in San Antonio. So we want to take you actually over to Galveston. You're looking live where things have started to clear out and dry out there in Galveston, which really dodged a bullet. It remains to be seen how bad the damage is from Laura in the state of Louisiana. We'll be back. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio 643 school officially back in session for most area districts with many students starting the academic year online. District officials across the city now asking students and parents to keep some things in mind to make sure the experience is easier for everyone. Doug Schutte is a director of academic technology with Northside ISD and joins us live to talk more about online etiquette. Good morning, Doug. Hi, Doug. Good morning. Thanks for joining us.
Now thank we know, you. oh, thank you. We know many students saw online learning for the first time back in March when schools shut down. What are the expectations now from students when it comes to learning online? Well, I think the first thing for students to understand is that, that the experience this fall is a lot different than, than it was in the spring. Uh, we, we set up uh, a school day schedule for students to really follow and get and, and take them through the day where there's, you know, for secondary students, there's periods, uh, a bell schedule, if you will. There's uh, live synchronous meetings that teachers are having uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and, and they really need to stay tight with that schedule and, and keep up with the school day. Uh, obviously, there's breaks built into that. There's a lunch for, for our younger kids. There's there's recess time for them to get away and, and take a break. But but I think the, the main thing for students to understand is that this is this is school back in session. Mm -hmm. and we're, we, we want we want you with us all day. Yeah, so. it's, it's changed quite a bit, Doug, since everything was kind of thrown together last minute there back in March. During this time, a lot of parents are home, some helping younger students with those Zoom meetings and others on assignments. What are your recommendations for parents at this time? Well, I think for, for parents and I think this varies by by age uh, for our older kids. Uh, students can be a lot more independent. I think it's it's speaking to what I, I spoke to earlier about uh, being sure students understand that we're back in school and there's this expectation to be online for most of the day with with their teachers and engaging with their classes, helping them keep to that schedule. Uh, I think with our younger students, obviously they need a little more support uh, with uh, uh, maybe with some assignments, with getting on with the technology, understanding how to join the video meeting that the teacher's having. Uh, and, and I think kids will pick those kind of things up fairly quickly. They're, they're really good with technology, so they tend to, they tend to pick those things up. Uh, but, I, but I think this, that the, if the parents can help, uh, help, help students understand that we're back in school uh, and also having a, a place for them to work, really setting up a, a school place for a desk, uh, a place where they're going uh, to sit and, and have the things they need uh, as they go through the day. And Doug, we know not all districts have guidelines when it comes to a school uniform like Northside, but what about dress code from home? Is there guidelines for that? Well, we, you know, that that's one of those things that uh, I think got a little lax and and we in our, in our work environments too as we moved home. But we want students to be dressed for school. Uh, we, we we want school appropriate clothing. You know, we, uh, as far as uh, logos on shirts and those kind of things, we want to be sure those things are appropriate for a school environment because the teacher's going to be seeing them and the other students in the class are going to be seeing them. So, so we want them up and ready to go. Yeah, setting the baseline there for expectations. Doug, I know technology is not perfect. Have, have you guys been able to iron out any kinks that you had there at Northside? Uh, we, we did. We, we, we have some workarounds for the problems we had earlier in the week. Uh, still working on some of the things that were causing us some problems, but uh, Yesterday uh, and the day before, we were able to to conduct class in, in the fashion that we were expecting. Uh, we had kids logging in a different way, but uh, but we did get we did get them on, and most of the kids were connecting with teachers on Tuesday and Wednesday. So good, good so news. Feel good about where we are there. Fantastic. All right, thank you so much, Doug Shooty with Northside ISD. Thank you, Doug. Have a good rest thank of the you. year, sir. Good luck. All right, time to check traffic one more time and see how lucky drivers are on the roads. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark. Right now seeing little pockets of moderate traffic all around the city, but still not bad. If you're headed to work, expect still a smooth ride. Well, a couple accidents are just getting cleared up. Eastbound U.S. Highway 90 West at Driftwood Street. That one looks just about clear. And this rollover accident we had at Mike Run and Reed Road there on the west side. That's looking good as well. It looks like that's about cleared up. All right, Trans Guide Time 1604 in Bandera looking good there. 410 at Fredericksburg and I-10 at at Callahan East. Traffic flowing smoothly, but it is moderate out there, so keep that in mind. 10 inbounds and outbounds at Frio. Hey, that looks great right now. Traffic flowing perfectly in 10 at UTSA Boulevard. That looks great there as well. All right, thank you, Nick. As we take a look at Galveston, similar skies here in South Texas, Mike Osterhage, as you come in now to the conversation, are we seeing indirect effects on our weather here in South Texas, having a major hurricane next door? Yes, and not what you would think. It's the it's helping to keep things very, very hot around here because mm -hmm. uh, this side of the storm, the air tends to sink. Now, it's a beautiful uh, start, obviously, and some of those clouds are some of the high clouds. This is looking off to the east, obviously, and some of the, the high clouds in the extreme western edge of the storm. It continues to move up to the north almost with a little bit of a uh, tilt to the, the northeast. And as you can see, it doesn't have quite the distinct eye in the center of it like it did 
just uh, maybe a couple of hours ago and still big rain producer out there. As you can see, it's kind of falling apart just a little bit, but it is still a category two storm, 105 mile per hour winds. Now this morning it had dropped down to roughly a category three and it's been weakening uh, and weakening quite considerably since last night when it made landfall as a very strong category four st storm with 150 mile per hour winds. And obviously over land, it's going to continue to weaken because it's cut off from its energy source, which is the warm water of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, still uh, considered a category one storm as it works its way up to the north fairly quickly into Arkansas. And we're going to be seeing a lot of wind up there, a lot of rain going into the mid south and the Ohio Valley. As far as we are concerned, once again, this is the water vapor imagery. We're on the sinking side of this storm. All the there's the center of it right there. All the clouds off to the east of it. Most of the rain to the east because of that counterclockwise rotation. But this causes the atmosphere to sink. And this is the dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. And this is what uh, this is what we have. Didn't get much from it except with that sinking air that helps to heat things up. And so that's the indirect effect, if you will, from this storm. There will be a couple of stray showers kind of popping up around here. Uh, one or two of them like we've seen, you know, the past what, four or five days or so. Some folks will see some rain. If you do get one of these showers because it is so humid down here at the surface, you may actually get a fairly decent downpour. But uh, again, you can probably count them on one hand later on this afternoon. That'll be the situation into tomorrow as well. And temperatures will stay very, very warm all the way through the weekend and even into the first part of next week. I don't know, very warm. I should say just very hot. 93 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, 100 for a high temperature today. We made it up to 98 yesterday. It was uh, up into the low hundreds the day before. Heat index is definitely going to be something that we take notice of today in the next few days because that 100 is going to feel like about, uh, say, 104 or so, and even higher heat indices in uh, parts of the western part of our viewing area. Hundreds through the weekend and first part of next week. Again, a stray shower here and there. Uh, same thing, maybe a little better chance middle of next week. Back to Laura for a second. I have a friend who lives in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana area, and he said as the storm was coming through, uh, it sucked all his doors open and actually sucked his window AC unit out of his oh, bedroom. Uh, not surprising considering the low pressure of these storms, right? Well, yeah, the low pressure and just the, the plain old wind, wind. with those things. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you get these winds down here at the surface that were well over 100 miles per mm -hmm. hour, 120 miles per hour. Yep. Probably lucky that's all that happened. No kidding, right? Yeah. More stories of their experiences and damages to come throughout the day. Right now, 651, 77 degrees. And with parents spending more time with their children at home during the pandemic, the need for discipline that works may be more important than ever. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we take a look at timeout techniques that experts say work the best. Sun is up here in orange, and we're being uh, we're able to now assess the damage, see what's going on here. A lot of trees down, a lot of fences down, some structural damage to some of the houses coming up. Uh, we're going to get in Storm Chaser. We're going to drive around safely, see what we see as far as damage is concerned, and we're going to bring you the latest coming up on GMSA at 9. Right now, it's 655. Let's go ahead and check those accidents that we were having, right? Yeah, some, they've cleared up right 90 is cleared up, and uh, the one on Mike and Reed is cleared up. So drive times 10 westbound from the northwest side of 35 to 1604, 12 minutes, and you're going back eastbound 13 minutes. So times are looking really good there and all around the city right now. Mike? Thanks, sir. And beautiful start this morning, although when you step outside, it is very humid out there. Some high clouds looking well off to the east, uh, basically on the western edge. Some of the high clouds being uh, thrown off from Laura over there in uh, Louisiana and East Texas. 78 in town, 72 Balverde, low 70s hill country. Temperatures are up compared to the past uh, few mornings. 93 at noon. I'm going for 100 for a high today. One or two stray showers out there. Not really great chances of rain. Same thing tomorrow. One thing for sure, we are going to stay hot. We are going to stay humid in through the weekend. All right, we will prepare for the triple digits. And we leave you now with a live look at Lafayette, Louisiana. Some of the damage as the sun is rising in the aftermath of Hurricane Laura.